Okay, this video is a part two of two different videos that I'm recording on how to leverage parameters within Azure Data Factory's mapping data flows. In the first one, I showed you how to use parameters, which is here on my data flow. I'm under the parameters tab, and you can put you can add your parameters in here. Now, what I showed you earlier in the first video was how to use these parameters within expressions. So, for example, if I had a draft column, let's say, for example, on here, I'd be able to leverage that parameter that I have here, which is called my wild path. I'd be able to leverage that or use that, and access it here within parameters in my expression. Now, what I want to show you in this video in part two is how to leverage those, how to use those parameters within settings, within source and sync transformations, because you can also use those there. So what I have is a source, only have a source here for this really simple data flow, and that source is pointing to what I call dummy container. And dummy container is really just pointing to a container. Um, it's essentially a delimited text style data set, and it just points to the container within my blob store. So I'm not pointing to a file or even to a folder, just a container. So I show you that right here. This is the data set right here. It just goes to a container. Great. So what I want to—the reason why I'm doing that is because now I can use parameters to um, set a wildcard path or just a regular path for every time that I execute this data flow from a pipeline. So I use that parameter here, and I say, okay, I'm only going to pull files from this folder that have this path to it here. So in this very simple example, I'm going to show you um, on my parameter, I just set it to July. So it's going to take everything from the folder that is called July off of the folder called um, date files right there. So I'll show you what that looks like. So here in my um, Explorer within the portal, you can see that I have uh, two folders called July and June. So I'm going to pull the files from July. Now those files are these three really simple data files that have uh, just a couple of um, columns in it, one row each, ABC, uh, I think I did DEF, yeah, DEF, and then the third one is simply GHI. So the reason why you'd want to uh, do this and use these wildcard paths in, as a parameter here within Dataflow is so that you could iterate across a, a set of files without needing to use iterators like for each or get metadata or lookups within the pipeline. You just call your data flow one time, so it's very quick. You don't have to have multiple executions of data flows. And then data flow can then pick up all of the files that match that path. That's all you have to do. So um, now what happens is when you go to test that here in the data preview, what you'll see is that Dataflow is going to take all of the files that it finds matching that parameter. So I have that, again, that parameter I have set as a default value of July. So it's going to take July, the files that I showed you. And then it'll find all the files that match that, that path, and it'll put them together. And so you see that it iterates through all those files, and it finds the ABC, EF, GHI, values spawn through those files here. Now, this is great, this is all consolidated, but one thing you might want to actually also use as an option here in your source is to set a column to store that file name. So this way you can keep track of the lineage of where each of those came from. So you see here everything is just kind of um, bunched together. But what you want to do is, you don't have to do this, but you can also set a column or a field to store the name of the file where those originated from. So now you'll see an additional column on here that I created just for storing the file name. And now you see each one of those came from which file. And that's available to you through the rest of your data flow. Okay, so that's one example that goes through an entire folder. Now let's look at how I'd want to look for files within a folder. So I'm going to use a wildcard path of date files again. So date files slash, now I have a star. Actually, let me just click on the expression builder so we can see it a little bit bigger. So date files slash star. Notice I am uh, putting quotes around these because I'm creating a string now. So what I did was, I'll, I'll back up one more second. What I did was I used the um, add dynamic data, which, you sh which you'll see in fields here within um, here within the settings in your source, you'll see add dynamic content. And so under add dynamic content, you get the expression builder. So I have to, I have to form a string, I have to do string interpolation. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the date file slash star to use the wildcard here of a star anything matching that. Put those within quotes. And I'm going to add to that string, which is essentially a concat, the a different parameter. This parameter is called my date. 
and then I will do anything that is before and after my dates dot txt. What's this gonna, what that's going to get for me is all of these files here that are at the root of my uh, date files directory, which is here, which are data underscore this, data underscore that, data underscore that. So there's three different date files. So this will match all of those. I meant to say, um, yeah, it'll match all of those. So let's take a look at what the parameter looks like for this example. So the parameter, and this is called my date, and I'm looking for 2019.07. So anything from July that is sitting in that folder will match. And when I go over to the data preview on this, you'll now see that it's going to use that. It's going to interpolate the string. It's going to run that wildcard path against the blob store, and it'll find all the files that match that pattern, which you can then set and change. So these are, I uh, have Mark, Jill, Sam, books, food, and movie. And let me show you the values in each of those. So this is file number one. And this has Mark, books, and one. The other one should be, I think it's um, Sam, is that right? Sam movie, and the last one is Jill, and I think I put food as the product. Yes, there you go. Okay, and again, let's do the same thing here. Let's also set this to um, store that lineage. Keep the lineage, let's store that um, originating file name as a uh, column. We refresh that. Another thing I want to show you too is a very common thing to do is you may also want to move or delete those files when the execution is done. Of course, these things don't work. The after completion does not operate within debug mode. You natively have to go out to a pipeline, run this from this pipeline, and then it will delete or move the files when you put that there. Let's look at the data preview, make sure we get the file. So there's the originating file name for each of the uh, rows that matched. So this is an example of using the uh, dynamic content with parameters and data flow, part two of my two videos on parameters and data flow. It also shows you an example of how you can iterate across files within data flow without needing to use the for each or iterators within the pipeline.